First up, our president, who went on a retweet storm this weekend, sharing with his 38 million plus followers, among other items, a gift someone else edited to look like Donald Trump is hitting Hillary Clinton with a golf ball and knocking her over. Again, that's our president. And a man former White House press secretary, Sean Spicer, now appears to be distancing himself from, as evidenced by this bit from last night's Emmy Awards ceremony hosted by Stephen Colbert. I mean, is there anyone who could say how big the audience is? Sean, do you know? <laughs> this will be the largest audience to witness an Emmys, period, both in person and around the world. Well, a bunch of people laughed, many more took umbrage on Twitter, including the Boston Globe's Matt Visor, who wrote, Hey, remember that time when Sean Spicer blatantly lied from behind the White House podium? It's now a punchline that he is in on. Actor Paul Tompkins, who declared, What fun to watch Sean Spicer having a sense of humor about all the times he lied to the American public. Good sport and journalist Salome Anderson, who tweeted, I've reported in five conflict zones, wrote a book, still have trouble getting men to take me seriously, but Sean Spicer works at Harvard now. Yes, as Salome said, Sean Spicer is a Harvard Institute of Politics visiting fellow. His appointment was announced at the same time as Chelsea Manning's. But Harvard rescinded her invitation just two days later after former acting CIA director Mike Morell resigned from the school and current CIA director Mike Pompeo canceled an appearance in protest of Manning, who was convicted, as you know, of leaking classified information. So much controversy, just so few days. Joining me to get into all of it are Martha Coakley, Martha's a former Harvard fellow herself, as well as Attorney General from Massachusetts, candidate for governor and partner at Foley Hoag. Hey there, how are you, Martha? Thank you. Harvard College alum Frank McNamara, who was in the Trump war room on election night. He's a former U.S. attorney. Frank, it's good to see you, too. Nice to see you. So too. this gift thing here, is this simply Trump being Trump, responding to criticism from Hillary Clinton in this whole bunch of interviews in the book itself? Is he just doing his quid for her quo? Um, in a different media, obviously, but he can't ignore a slight. And I think, uh, you know, it was cited as being pretty juvenile, which I think it is. I'm surprised there hasn't been more umbrage about it. But well, maybe so he's just on. channeling Gerald Ford. Does that, yeah. really bother you? Does that really bother you so much, or, or is it are we making too much out of this thing? No, I, I mean, he, he has a huge audience, and I do think there's a stage at which, you know, people expect him maybe to grow up. We haven't quite seen it. Are you sighing? Is that what you were just doing? Well, were you sighing at her I, I, answer? No, I would never sigh. You were sighing. I would never I, sigh. Why were you Martha? sighing or some facsimile? We are perspiring and growing dizzy over a golfing gif. How would people feel? Would they be, feel better if Trump had uh, posted something about a Shakespeare play in which Hillary gets assassinated in Central Park? Well, he po did post something. We're about not outraged the UN, which about is a that. Big but you know, I have to say, the place where I'm, where Martha Coakley is. Beyond the fact that it's unfunny, it is puerile. It's really, this is the leader of the free world embarking on meetings with yeah. leaders, his yeah. peers from yeah. around the world, uh, and he's doing that, this stupid yeah, thing? That's what he does. It's, it's juvenile. It's juvenile. But Trump, is, Trump breaks societal and political norms on a regular basis. So it doesn't bother This you is all. why he was elected. It doesn't bother me in the slightest. It's a retweet. He didn't author the gift. He spent, if he spent his days concocting gifts in the West Wing, I'd have, have some concern. But, uh, but just to retweet something like this, is it, is it silly? Yes. Am I worried about it? No. Okay. I, think it's, I think it's more amusing Let's than anything Let's see if you're else. worried about this other thing here. I know you just told me a couple of minutes ago you made a very wise choice last night. You're watching Ken Burns and Lynn Novick's and Vietnam. Football. And football. And football. If that's still allowed. Rather than watching the – you're allowed to watch football <laughs> as long as you complain about the concussions, which we'll yeah. talk about tomorrow night here. Uh, uh, but Sean Spicer made the appearance. You just saw that play yeah. a couple of minutes ago. It, in many ways, it seems to me we're celebrating – Deceit. I mean, there's no dispute, even amongst people who are big Trump supporters like you are, that on a, lots of major issues, it wasn't just crowd size, it was Obama uh, uh, apparently, uh, you know, uh, what was it, wiretapping Trump Tower, the infamous meeting in June of last year was about adoption. I mean, he has regularly made major misrepresentations of the American people. Tr and Trump we're or Spicer? Uh, uh, Spicer. And we're, well, he's the spokesperson for the President of the United States. Yeah, on Trump's he, behalf. And he's misrepresenting yeah. things and being celebrated on the Emmys, on talk shows. And I don't find that particularly funny either. Yes? No progressive who voted for Bill 
Clinton, yeah. uh, who supported Susan Rice with her serial uh, mis misstatements, can be heard to be outraged at having Sean Spicer on the Emmys. I think if you if you if you are, are you allowed to be outraged about both things. Your problem is with talk to Stephen Colbert. What do you he mean? was the one. It was his idea. It was his, his idea. idea. Well, he's but always got the he's the gauge of truthiness, right? And it's better to have him on the Emmys, sort of making fun of himself in that time period. But what politicians don't engage in puffery, and you know, the public's. But uh, who's engaging in puffery? <laughs> Are you calling the things he said puffery? Uh, some of them in terms of crowd size, and he was proven to be wrong. I'm not defending Sean Spicer. I'm just saying. If he wants to come on the show and, you know, make fun of himself in that, I don't see this problem with that. I do have a problem with the video where Trump, you know, is beating up the media and this idea that he can use and demonstrate that violence. That was the CNN thing from a month yeah. or so ago. Continue, I mean, these, these very visual ideas that, you know, I am going to hit a golf ball and hurt somebody or I am going to... Um, Pummel the media. Those people translate those things literally, whether they should or not. I don't know. But he is the president of the United States. May I just say, maybe you may say whatever you want. We have people shooting themselves in Chicago at record numbers. We have illegal terrorists blowing up people in tube stations in London. And all we're worried about are Trump's tweets and Absolutely Trump's not. gifts. No, that's not all we're worried about. That's but we're we're worried about the use of violence in a joking way uh, that that makes it, you know, laughable. Violence against another human being, Hillary Clinton. You know, you're, when you're, like, you're, like boxing, somebody, like boxing, like NFL football, no, but, but, well, like well, ice, Frank, ice we're, hockey. We're Frank, recognizing all of those. Are, uh, if people don't remember this is the CNN thing, I mean, a lot of people in my business who are far braver than I, I sit in a studio, they go out <laughs> in the world, were nervous about whether or not there was... Uh, some incitement of violence. And before you say how stupid can people be, I was in Comet Ping Pong Pizza in Washington yeah. a few months ago, the same place where some moron uh, read that Hillary Clinton had a sex ring in the basement and went to shoot it up with a loaded, uh, 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 whatever it was, AR-15 or something. Yes. So a lot of people take this stuff seriously. Yeah, you can ins there are idiots among us on the fringe, and these people are easily energized. So isn't it better but, not to give but, them incitement? But does that mean we take away people's First Amendment no, rights course, so we don't not. energize the, the electrons that. on the margin? Of course not. The, po the point is, uh, the point is there, are, there are weird people... They, they're going to exist. And when the president does that, he can do it. But he also expects and should expect that he will be criticized because yeah. we have a First Amendment right to say he's acting of like a juvenile. Do. Let's of course come to you a do. place. You, you again, you were a fellow at the IOP. You were an alum, as I said a minute ago. Sean Spicer is a fellow. Yes. Uh, visiting uh, fellow. What? Not a resident fellow. Visiting fellow, fellow right. There's different <clears throat> kinds of fellows at Harvard. We can get into that for a minute. Chelsea Manning, what, what kind of fellow was she about to be? Yeah, a visiting, visiting fellow. Visiting fellow. Everybody knows what her situation was. Obviously, violation of the Espionage Act leaks some classified, some unclassified, to WikiLeaks, sentenced to a lot of years in jail, and ultimately uh, Barack Obama decided she should be released. Uh, ultimately, after pressure, as I said, from a current CIA leader and a former CIA leader, the invitation was rescinded. Did Harvard do the right thing the first time, the second time, or neither? Well, the first thing that has to be said about the Chelsea Manning thing, and this may be heresy, but it must be said, as a friend of mine observed, this is her second opportunity to be a fellow that she has blown. What does that mean? Just what it says. It's a joke. The it's second, a very good joke. The, the, it is. That is a great joke. The, the, the second thing is Harvard is stalked with hubris, and I think the issue here is uh, not so much Chelsea Manning, but what is going on at the Institute of Politics, A.K.A. Camelot High School. Where I don't understand it, any of this, Frank. I mean, I understood the joke after you explained it, which is actually not very funny. And I don't think it's a funny, funny joke. But, yeah. No, it's not. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's an but, inappropriate yeah. but, joke. But, but, but so should Harvard not have invited her to be a visiting fellow? Ultimately, you know, the dean, after he said, well, I didn't realize it was an honorific, which to me is ridiculous yeah. that he didn't realize it, he said she should speak there. Should she not speak there yeah. either? Where are you going well, with this? Let me rise above the virtue signaling that's going on and say this. I don't know what qualifications Chelsea Manning has to be a fellow. But I don't think her gender orientation is relevant to that choice. I maybe agree she with has that. the and metaphysics. Nobody's... Maybe she has the background and the training to to enrich the uh, <clears throat> arguably uh, rich environment, which is the Kennedy School. However, I haven't seen any 
presentation so let me be clear, of No those. visiting fellow shouldn't speak there either because the dean said she can speak and she should speak. Yes, no. I don't understand that question. Uh, she, speak. She will not be a visiting fellow. She will be right. invited She's, to speak. It's been rescinded. Should she be allowed to speak at uh, the IOP or no? I, I, I don't know. I How don't know her you, qualifications. Uh, she's been invited to speak. She said no. I think the first invitation was a mistake. I think she wasn't vet vetted properly. I think that her category of whatever she has to offer to the debate is not what usually happens when people whose accomplishments and whose experience in politics and media and government, elected or otherwise, are brought into the college. So they made a mistake the first time they admitted it. Did they make a mistake with Sean Spicer, as per our discussion a couple of minutes ago? Uh, the spokesperson for the President of the United States making misrepresentation after well, misrepresentation. He's getting an honorific, too, isn't well, he? Well, he's getting a visiting fellow. I'm not going to gauge that, but he's coming in for a short period of time. He did hold... Well, so is Chelsea Manning. Uh, and they... Uh, but he, he did hold an office where he had experience. You're making a distinction that, well, we think he lied so he shouldn't come. I don't think that's the basis upon which they made the decision about him. I think they're in two different, totally different categories. Besides which, Harvard, as Frank knows and you know, it's a private institution. It's a not-for-profit college. They can invite whom they want. And when they make these calls, they can rescind them. They can expect to get the, the publicity they've gotten on it, but it's their call. You can invite who you want to come into your show. I do. There. Let, let me make I, one point. Go very quick the the word can... lie is overused and misapplied. As Martha knows, it is a false statement, knowingly false, when made. Did he know there were three million, uh, that there weren't three million fraudulent votes when he said there were? Did he know that Barack Obama didn't wiretap I, I Trump Tower when he said it? I don't think any one of us at this table can say definitively that there weren't three million uh, fraudulent votes. I think I can, but we won't have time for more. Martha Coakley, I see you. Thank Frank you. McNamara, you have a bad hand. That's why you're doing that thing. Thank you so much.